Lawrence 21. They're coming. In a distant world, a device is being built. A device unlike anything else so powerful it can save the universe. The Marble Machine X. The leader of the evil Mole Federation has decided to stop the Marble Machine X to preserve a dark world where music is being made by MIDI keyboards and other more practical music instruments. One warrior standing up against the army of moles to fight for the future we all believed in. The situation is desperate. No matter how many moles are whacked by the warrior, there's always more to come. The Federation moves their secret weapon into position to deal the final blow. This is the Mega Mall. The Mega Mall is gaining power every day, feasting on broken dreams. Deep within the Mega Mall lies the truth. The Marble Machine X is the first principle's bad idea. To whack the Mega Mold Warrior has to prove that the Marble Machine X is the first principle's good enough idea. Can it be done? Something is wrong with the marble pressure. When I drop a kick drum marble, you should see the marbles going down in the pipe up there. There. That pipe has a delay, but it's pretty good. Now look at the pipe next to it. The marble hardly falls down, it's very slow and sloppy. So snare drum. So the second snare drum pipe is kind of acting perfectly. Hi-hat. That one is also slow. The marble pressure is something that are designed to be adjustable. So when a tuning thing that is adjustable is a little bit off and I can adjust it and I designed it to be adjustable, I don't mind it so much. It's okay, it's just a tuning thing and it's meant to be tuned. A worse issue is when I have to fine tune a design that is not even meant to be tuned. So in one way I wouldn't be too worried because it's the marble pressure and I have designed to tune it. I'm a little bit perplexed to why the pressure is too low now. I thought I kind of adjusted it and I built this design to be adjustable with the pressure. So I'm not that worried actually, but also I wonder a little bit why. And I'm thinking maybe there's dust caught because I've been doing a lot of work. I've been sanding a lot of wood and stuff up there. So maybe the marbles have taken some particles down in the pipes that clogs them or something. So the first order of business is to clear all the lanes out from all the marbles in the whole machine and vacuum clean the pipes and use an air compressor to clean everything up. Let's try to find a root cause for this mold. I'm also cleaning the marbles themselves. These are now clean marbles in clean lanes. Let's see if they fall correctly. No. So as you know, the top marble always needs to stay flush. And when the cue is like slowly creeping down, you have this top marble obstructing the flow in the marble divider a lot. There's too much resistance in these marble cues still. You check this pipe here. There comes the second marble. So this delay of the marble queue moving can also cause an issue for the marble gate because we always want them to be filled. We never want them to run dry. 
This one is better, this one is problematic. I discovered something interesting. These marbles have a kind of oily film on them. I washed them when I got them, but now they're oily again. And I think it's because of this graphite powder that I've been using to lubricate the plywood lengths. I think this kind of goes onto the surface of the marble and makes them uh, gluey. So actually I went ahead and cleaned four of them and I can even see that these are brighter and these are darker. And what's interesting is that these four they roll from there. These are the ones that I cleaned. Now let's try the oily, oily ones. Okay, two get stuck. Three get stuck. Four get stuck. <laughs> I'm not going to read in too much in this. I want to build a system that has wide enough sweet spots to handle both the gluey and the clean ones. But I think still at this point, if I'm going to be serious with these tests, I should go ahead and degrease all my marbles. So that's what I'm going to do next. The first time John met Joko, he went to her art exhibition. There was a ladder in the middle of the room, he could climb up, and there was magnifying glass hanging down from the ceiling. And with a magnifying glass, you could read written very tiny in the roof the word yes. <laughs> I'm sorry all other dishwashing fluids. There's only one dishwasher fluid in my life. <laughs> wow, look at this water. It's black. Something is coming off the marbles. That's good news. So I'm trying to dry them fast so they don't rust. And of course I was too late. Another facepalm moment delivered by yours truly. They were fatty, now they're rusty. Brilliant. I think the fat was worse than the rust. It's just annoying when you fix something, you cause another issue. This happened in like three minutes. I didn't know the reaction was going to be that quick. I do have new oiled marbles in their original bag from Speku Mastokom Sweden. If I need to replace them, I have new marbles. Let's try on the machine. Okay, moment of truth. I don't think the marbles will go much smoother, but let's see what happens. No, not at all. The marbles are not running faster. I actually didn't think this would make a big difference. So this just confirms my theory that we have to change the pressure lanes down beneath. While I'm preparing the next steps in the pressure process, I wanted to show you something I did with this gear before another marble test. We couldn't fit it into that video. But it was pretty cool because the gear was running very wavy. It was not running straight. This gear was never glued together. It's made from two pieces of plywood. I always had the idea that if I put it on a flat surface and glue them together with a lot of pressure, maybe I can make it straighter. So that's what I did in an earlier video that we never showed before. So check this out. This large side gear is dancing around. It doesn't look straight. And sometimes I even think it causes some unnecessary vibrations and inaccuracies in the powertrain of the Marble Machine X. So I wanted to try to fix this once and for all. Here on the flat CNC table, you can actually see that the gear is wobbly. When I open up the gear, you can see all the internal disc magnets. This looks so cool, even though I'm a little bit uh, annoyed with myself for this design decision. If you've been following, you know that if there's another thing I would like to change on the MMX, is to skip the magnetic lift system altogether. The decision to use a magnetic lift was to create a cool look. The more mature engineer designer in me thinks that that is pure idiocy. <laughs> Anyway, it works for now, even though it's caused a lot of pain. So I'm leaving it on the machine 
until it breaks down. But maybe one day it will break down and I will just take a baseball bat to the whole magnetic marble lift on the Marble Machine X. That will be a happy day. <laughs> The gear feels very differently after being glued up. It's much more compact one piece. It looks super straight on the CNC machine. This is so much better. If we compare with before, you can see how the before is dancing around. And if we go to after now, after the glue up, it's not dancing around almost anything. Glue up worked, yes. Very happy with the result. It's really running much, much straighter. So that was awesome. Another amazing thing that I found in the ring gear that we never got the chance to show you either was that I found a huge point of friction. You know, I've been fighting to reduce friction in the ring gear a lot. And I found that there were screws coming in from the side of the ring gear, digging into the plywood. So this is also from one of the marble test videos from the autumn. I've been struggling and removing a lot of friction in this ring gear. I just found a new source of friction that I think was the worst of them all. So the ring gear rotates like this and we have to hold it sideways. So we're holding the ring gear sideways with these small 3D printed bearing holders. So the sides of the plywood is touching this bearing and the bearing rotates. So nothing should be sliding or causing friction. But when I looked closely, I could see that the screw holding the bearing had traveled out. So this screw head has gone in the bottom of this groove. So you see this damages here in the wood? It's hard to tell on camera, but this has become concave. The screw head has dug into this plywood and of course causing massive amount of friction. If we look closer, you can see that this head has been grinded down by the plywood. Look on the side right here. This has definitely just been sliding against the plywood. We can see here that the plywood has eaten into the 3D print. This is also causing friction. One by one, I'm removing all the 3D prints from the Marble Machine X. I could replace this part with a metal part like aluminum, but for now I'm going to try to keep using the 3D printed parts to save me some time. I'm going to remove this extra material that was sliding against the plywood. Then I'm gonna use a longer screw that will have more thread interaction with a 3D print. And I'm going to use silicone as a thread locker. I remember in my conveyor belt video, when I used Loctite in acrylic and the whole comment section went crazy. You were of course absolutely right. Loctite has a chemical reaction between two metals. So Loctiting screws to plastic is just plain stupidness as long as you use the wrong Loctite. So I've taken your feedback into account here and silicone was something that a lot of you suggested. So I hope this longer screw together with the silicone will stay in place and not slowly creep up and causing this friction to return. But in the end, I'm really Really, really happy that I found this error. I'm fixing all eight of these lateral holders and I'm really happy that I found this problem. The ring gear has been causing a lot of friction and I think this might be one of the worst problems that has caused friction on the whole Marble Machine X. Best ever. Those two moles had it coming for them for a long time. Really nice to have them whacked. Now let's get back to the pressing matter of today, the pressure issue on the kick drum. So this is the drums pressure module. And for the kick drum that I'm attacking first, these are the pressure lanes. So if you've been following, you know I can adjust the pressure in two ways here. So you see the lane is going backwards. So the first way is to route this lane more straight. Let's start with that. So as you can see in this example, I'm in a good cadder. The sketch is constrained and clean. Let's remove this. You are tangential with you. For some reason, constraints are so fun. Uh, look at that. That's a much faster marble lane. So that's one way that I've now made this pressure module much faster with much lower pressure. The second way is that we can control the over rotation of the marbles inside here. So that we do with a top sketch. So here you can see that the marble is actually not running on its bottom, it's running on its side, which means it's over rotating. This is just a guessing game now for me. 
Andrew Scher has a brilliant suggestion on the Wintergarten Discord server for an adjustable marble height device. And when I saw this, I immediately thought of the fact that if we could stack two of these on each other, the lower adjustable one could be for the pressure. So basically just with an Allen key, I could actually adjust the marble pressure on each channel. And I've been spending some time this morning to look thoroughly at this idea and for the touring version we're definitely going to do this on the machine in my studio today we are running out of space i can't put this in into the space that we have available but if we design this in from the scratch it's going to be amazing so now when i'm going to make my guess around how this marble goes i would love if i could have this as a pressure control instead because I wouldn't have to guess and then CNC something. So this is the third time I'm CNCing this part. It should have been a one-time setup. Okay, so I'm going to go all in for the version that makes the marbles roll as easily as possible. Just the 18 millimeter round internal circle. So this is now going to be the new profile for the sweep. So there you go. Now we made two changes. This should actually be a quite a big difference in marble pressure. So here's the next one. And this was actually even slower on the real machine. I'm going to do the same with this one, making it as straight as possible and removing this over rotational structure. So from this to this shorter, smoother, faster marbles. Great. So check my short, clean timeline here in Fusion 360. These are the only features I used to make all this. Great. Aggressivo. Kick drum parts for now, cymbal parts for another video. Let's look at this. Oh yeah, that's great. It's place music. old version here. New version here. Shorter track and no over rotation. So here's the second channel. Here's the old version. And here's the new version. Let's get them on. If this works first try, plug and play, then I'm gonna keep all this system. If it doesn't work, I'm going a little bit back to the drawing board because this takes a lot of time. Moment of truth. Ooh. That sound feels very good. Look at the marbles going chagunk. And the pressure down on the gate feels right. And the final proof if we have made something working. Oh yes. I'm so relieved. So you see the steps the marbles are taking. Let's keep on going for some time. So an added bonus here is that we will be able to play longer because even when the marbles run low, they will still feed. Whew. 
I'm really relieved. I had this feeling in my stomach it's going to go bad and it's just perfect. And I also feel the friction on the marble gate. It's perfect because remember we didn't want too high marble pressure. So this is all I could ask for. Great for the marble divider, great for the feeding of the marbles. Everything works now. So now I have to go over the snare drum and the hi-hat and then maybe we're moving closer to a marble test video on the main channel. I want to make a last comment that when I adjust a system that I designed to be adjustable, I designed this plywood thing in modules, I could take them out and switch them out like this. I have a little bit more patience with myself because I actually, if you can't make it fit, at least make it adjustable. With my designs that I made adjustable, the height modules and everything, even though it takes a lot of time, I think the design intent at the bottom works. I think I've done a good job in the underlying design allowing for this kind of adjustment. It's just a lot of fiddling in and out, but the way I see it, this is going to be a default setting that once everything is up and running, I won't have to meddle with at all. So that's my hope anyway. I definitely went on the too slow pressure side earlier and we fixed that today.